Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in the Empty Nest. I think I need to shut that door because the Christmas decorations in the hallway that aren't put up yet are bugging me. Hold up. Today I thought a good place to start would be to kind of explain why we live where we live. We live in a pretty unusual home on the Guadalupe River in a little town, more or less halfway between Austin and San Antonio. Because we live in a floodplain, our home is elevated 16 feet. And we built this home about five years ago, we started the process and actually moved in three years ago. So let me just explain how we got here. Obviously, Life in the Emptiness is the name of the channel. So we were slowly but surely becoming empty nesters after all three of our kids were either graduated from college, attending college, just starting college, and now finishing college. They've all graduated and are gainfully employed. And we just decided that we didn't want to live in that neighborhood and have uh, that kind of square footage anymore. We wanted to downsize. And uh, the area that we lived was a wonderful area to raise kids. And my kids grew up there and I think they're still angry that we actually sold the house, but we did. And um, we had no plan when we sold our house. We knew we wanted to downsize, but the house sold quickly and we had to make some decisions pretty fast. And I just sat there and thought, you know, what do I really want in my forever house and retirement home? And, you know, just place that I want to be at, work at, do all of those things. So I just sat there in front of the computer and Googled um, waterfront property in Texas. And the lot that we ended up building on is was the very first thing that popped up. A little bit about my background is I was born in England, uh, in Northern England in a coastal town. And my whole family is still in England. My extended family is still in England. And my parents immigrated to Canada when I was a baby. And you know, I lived in Canada till I was about 13 years old and lived in Calgary, which is the middle of Canada, and then on the West Coast in Vancouver. So I was back by the water again and then moved to Hawaii when I was 13 years old and lived there until I was 22 or 23. My formative years have always been in a home near the water. So, you know, living in South Texas, we have great lakes and rivers, obviously. We found this great lot that is on the bend of the Guadalupe River where we built, you know, probably in hindsight, we got lucky. We didn't ask very many questions and which was probably stupid, but we didn't. This lovely little lot here was subdivided from our neighbor's property after the owners passed away and their children subdivided the property from a, to a two acre to an almost one acre lot. And it has 70 feet of waterfront that's undeveloped as far as it, we don't have a bulkhead or anything like that, but you can jump in and paddleboard, it's great. This year is a year that we will get some waterfront access and we'll pro you'll probably be along for that ride too. So um, we do have access, but it's just not very safe. We need to build some stairs and, and a safer way to get in there. So long story short was we bought this lot and I didn't do much research on the neighborhood. This neighborhood is an old neighborhood. It's been around, I think, since 1954 is when they first started building in here. And you you drive in and there are very few homes in here. And again, in hindsight, it was pretty stupid to not ask the questions, but the neighborhood had been flooded twice. We had two major floods in the San Antonio, Seguin, Austin area in 1998 and 2002. One was a 100 year flood and one was a 500 year flood within four years of each other. And apparently in 2002, I believe there were 54 homes in this neighborhood that were lost. And people have chosen to not rebuild. And I did hear, I mean, way after the fact that at one point they were considering just making this parkland and not letting people build here. But FEMA has now allowed it. You have to build to FEMA standards, which of course I didn't know when we bought the lot either until we started talking to builders and the city and figuring out how we were gonna accomplish this. You know, at first I thought, oh, that's a bummer. You know, we have to build up. You know, I was hoping to have like a little cute cottage house on waterfront on the river. 
now I love it. Like we have a great view. I think I have some actual footage that will probably intersperse here so you can kind of see what the process was and it was pretty daunting. We managed to um, overcome some of the obstacles that we had. So we, uh, of course, over the years, I have been looking and looking and looking at ideas and, you know, things like that. And I found this little cottage that I thought, this is perfect. It's just, it was tiny. It was like 500 square feet and um, just a, basically a studio cottage. And I thought, well, what if we built that? And we built another house and they were connected by deck. And so I sketched it out on a piece of paper and a really good friend of ours, um, he took it and put it into CAD and helped me talk through it. And then when we actually were ready to build and go and had signed a contract and everything, we took it to an architect who then kind of fleshed it out, made it work. And um, you know what, it's been super rewarding. It's a cool house. I'm super proud of the design. And you know, now one thing I haven't mentioned, but we will do, I think our third episode about our little Airbnb and how it just the little, we call it the little house and the big house and how it's kind of evolved into being a really cool space to rent out. And it really has been a godsend, not just financially, but as another income means as you get older and the freedom to do things you want to do and like i said this property has it's a little over three quarters of an acre it had a bunch of fruit trees on and most of them we've been able to save we have two huge pecan trees a loquat tree a fig tree two apple trees and then we had a peach tree the poor thing didn't survive though unfortunately but you know the pecan trees are great Seguin Texas is the pecan capital of the world we have the world's largest pecan here so I'll put a link to that in the description below it's pretty funny actually so the pecans are wonderful it's kind of been something I've never done before I've never had fruit and things like that so um, on my properties that has been mine in my adulthood so uh, it's pretty cool. I am glad that we were able to build in this neighborhood now because I feel like it just needed a little uh, fresh blood in here and we have a lot of new people moving into the neighborhood. We were only the second new home to build in here after the floods and nobody has built since but we've had a lot of the older homes that were in here people come in and now uh, one of our neighbors is doing a community garden in one of the vacant lots. It's just a cool place. So hopefully that will flourish and you know, I'd love to be part of that in this neighborhood too. So um, yeah, send me any questions that you have about the property or about building in a floodplain. You know, there's so much that I have learned in the past few years about that. And let me know if you have any questions, send me questions in the comments below and of course, please like this video and please give me a thumbs up and push the subscribe button.